hi there and welcome to the last grown up in the woods. Today I, I think I'm going to pretend that I'm lost, even though there's a nice warm cabin right over there. So the trench shelter is a pretty fast shelter. It's pretty much a, a trench with some um, either snow or some boughs piled on top of it. So I've got my Avalon shovel. Okie doke, let's get going. So while my trench looks fairly deep, now that I've added my skis, they've sunk down a little bit because um, it's pretty powdery. Let's see how comfortable this would be. That's just about right. It could have been narrow to better accommodate my poles and my skis. I am using my Altai Hawks, which are only 125 centimeters. I mean, the smaller the better because the less space there is, the less space that is that I need to heat up. However, I want to use my skis to get back to the cabin because I'm not in a survival situation, so <laughs> I'm going to find some sticks. Since this snow is so deep and lovely to dig in, I, I might as well just on a snow cave, but maybe that'll be next time. I like the trench shelter because you can do it in pretty much any kind of snow, and if you even have icy enough snow, you can just use the ice blocks that you've cut out of your, out of your trench and use those as the roof. The boughs help for insulation. I snagged some pieces of blue foam from the cabin so I could reduce my impact on the trees in the area. Without the blue mats, I would have put boughs on top of the reflective blanket to give a small space to allow maximum heat reflection. Lesson learned. To avoid having snow fall on your insulated floor, wait until the roof is on. I did some tweaking and tried again. And I guess I used the skis after all. A reflective blanket on the roof would have been great too. I didn't want to unfold another one for this experiment because it would never pack up the same again. Okay, I'm going to go get some dinner. All in all, this shelter took me just over an hour to build. Okay, so here's what's happening. I originally had thought that my head would go better at the other end where it would be warmer, but um, there's no way I was going to be comfortable like that just because of claustrophobia. Um, so my head is near the opening, which is probably not the best idea, but I do know that I'm not in a survival situation. I stomped out a toe box with my feet. Otherwise, this, uh, this would be over my head. So I'm, I'm starting off this with just wearing my, my clothes. Just to see how warm it is, I have my sleeping rig with me, and if I'm uncomfortable, I'm, ju I'm just going to go to the cabin. I, I honestly don't feel like I need to prove anything to myself. I mean, it's not like emulating a survival situation anyway, because after I built a shelter, I went and spent a bunch of time eating with friends in a nice warm cabin, so I have the benefit of, of feeling secure and um, a full belly of food. <sighs> and dry clothes. I'm feeling pretty warm right now actually, except for my hands which are ungloved to film this. Along the ground I can really feel that emergency wet blanket heating up and sending its heat back to me. It's the air that's pretty cold, but I've got the down jacket. And judging by how my nose hairs are sticking together, I'd say it's about um, minus 15 out there, and maybe minus 10 in here. I've got my backpack and my rain jacket piled up as a door, but there's still obviously a big gap there. I also have another vent by my feet, because I thought that's where my head was going to be. At least I won't die of asphyxiation. Okay, I'll check in with you in the morning. Oh, good morning, and <laughs> I totally didn't sleep in here. I stuck around for a little while longer, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to get into my sleeping bag now. And then I'm like, you know what? It's really crowded in here, and I'm not going to sleep. And it's not because I was cold, it was just that I was uncomfortable. My head was still kind of facing down, despite the fact that I tried to build up a bit of a pillow, and was crowded, and to get into my sleeping bag would have been uncomfortable. So I'm fairly certain I would have survived. I'm fairly certain I wouldn't have gotten any sleep, even in the sleeping bag where I would have been nice and toasty warm. This little toe box I punched out for myself last night. The other thing is that there's quite a bit more room for the head in that end, so it probably would have been more comfortable physically, but mentally I wanted to be able to get out quickly. Um, you can see the vent hole right there. 
twice before I have arrived to a cabin to find that it was uninhabitable or unfindable and have but it was both times were in late spring when the air was quite warm so he actually just dug a trench and put some boughs down and slept like that and um was pretty comfortable both times. Oh yeah, so the channel of the week. This week I want to give a shout out to Wapiti Man who comes from some of my old rangering territory and he goes into the, some of the old parks I used to work in, including Wapiti. Hence the name. So go check out Brad's channel. Link is up here. Um, to subscribe to me, click here. And to check out some other videos, click over here. Okay, so long and see you next week-ish.